recently I updated my Hubson 501 SS uh, to add the Wi-Fi feature and uh, there'll be uh, a link in the in the video to that and the other thing that I wanted to do was to upgrade the the firmware so there's firmware on the transmitter there's firmware for the flight controller and receiver and also for the for the, the new camera board that I put in there um, generally speaking if it ain't broke don't fix it I'm doing this because there are some features in the new firmware that I want to try um, but uh, if you're at all um, concerned about doing this procedure then um, simply don't to get on um, first thing to do well, first thing to do is to remove the props whenever you do anything on the on on the bench especially with regards to firmware and, and, and modding very important to remove the, the props as one day it will start up and you want to keep your pinkies on the ends of your hands without further ado first thing we're going to do is to check what firmware revisions we have in place at the moment to do that we power the copter up and the transmitter so now with the quadcopter powered up if we bring down the throttle and press we get to the the menu hope we can see that on the on the camera yes so you go down using the stick here to show version just click to select that so on the actual um, transmitter at the top there we can see the transmitter is running 4224 with the LCD version 133 we can confirm as I said that this is a 501 SS running version 2.122 uh, one of them is the flight controller, I can't remember at this point which, and the receiver uh, version 1136. So we've got updates uh, that we can download for, for all of those, so we'll get on and, and do that. And just before we proceed any further, and for the avoidance of doubt, double and double check again the version of quadcopter that you have. If you change especially the receiver firmware um, from a 501S to the SS, uh, it's not going to work, and vice versa. So I'm going to start by upgrading the flight controller firmware. And to do this, I'm going to use the H501A code, even though this is an SS that's really only relevant for the receiver that's the part you have to be cautious of so the first thing to do is to get the unit powered up and then connect it to the computer we can hear the acknowledgement so that's all good so turning to the flight controller now the tool to use is the V1 which is designed for the 501A but also works with the SS and we can see here that it is connected so for the flight controller here we'll open file and we're in the correct directory so we just select that and important just to only click once shouldn't panic at this point we'll just try it again we can see finally it has done it and disconnected so that was a slightly worrying moment there now if we read the version now we can see that it has in fact upgraded to the correct version so a little bit of drama there but these things are are not without drama normally so hopefully with the flight controller now done in, in in place we can upgrade the receiver so the really important thing here is to navigate up to the SS folder and to use the receiver file from there if we don't do that um, things will go badly wrong so let's upgrade that again just tapping once 
You can see the rapid flashing and the, the counter going up as it does the upgrade. 100%. And we'll read the version again. Interestingly, it doesn't seem to uh, read the version for the receiver in this part, but uh, we will find out. Oh, there we go. It was just resetting itself. So now we have the receiver version for the A501 is in fact the 501 SS and the 501 flight controller. So with both of those in place, we can turn our attention to the transmitter. So for the transmitter upgrade, what we have to do is to hold down the video button and the stick into the bottom right hand corner and switch on. At this point, all that we see is the flashing red LED, nothing on the display whatsoever. So turning to the PC for the standard transmitter, the tool is the V2 tool. We need to connect it to the computer, clearly. So now we can... Interesting beeping. Open file. And this is the standard transmitter file. And upgrade. Again, just pressing the once. And we see the LED here blinking alternate red and green. Upgrade success, and it shows us on the screen here which file it's used. So that um, should be that. With the transmitter upgraded as well, now it's time to test. The first thing we need to do is to rebind the transmitter with the quadcopter. What we need to do is to hold down the, the photo button and switch on. And we see the system initialize message there and bind to plane with the LED flashing. So now if we power up the quad, it's also recommended to have them as close as, as possible when it's in the rebinding process. You don't want to have them too far away. And there we are. So we can see that the, uh, the system is now bound and we're getting the, the calibrate compass to upgrade the camera firmware, we're going to need the SD card. This normally lives in the in the quadcopter for the video, and it's important that it's a, a reasonable quality SD card. So this is a, that's a number ten speed, and it's Transcend Make. So uh, you don't want to be using any no-name brands. And similarly, you want a, a reasonable uh, card reader as well. So I'm just going to get that plugged into the laptop and then we'll go through the, the camera upgrade procedure. The first thing I'm going to do is to format the card. So looking in the PC, that's the F drive. So we'll just format that. And make sure it's FAT32 no real, real need to give it a label but, uh, just for the avoidance of doubt excellent so with that formatted I've put the relevant files on the desktop here just to find them easily and we can see here the camera firmware now the instructions are, are quite straightforward and simple. Copy the whole unzipped folder, the firmware update. Put the quad upside down, micro SD in, plug in the battery, and the blue light should light up three times. Wait for it to stay off. So the first part is obviously to select the folder and I'm going to right mouse click that and then simply send to the Hubson drive. 
Okay, so just for the avoidance of doubt, we can see here the firmware update folder with all the files inside. So now for the next trick. So here's our, our card with the relevant firmware on it. So the first thing to do is to get that plugged in. And then simply power it up. It may be difficult to see, but the, the blue light has come on. And now it's gone off and on again. off for the second time and on again and off again so that should be the uh, the firmware installed correctly now that uh, the light has gone out and, and stayed out the last thing we need to do is to calibrate the sticks on the on the transmitter um, make sure that they're operating correctly so for that we need to push both sticks into the top left hand corner while switching on and we get the message calibrate stick mode 2 this is mode 2 there are other instructions for mode 1 but we will see the LED switching on and off so now it's simply a process of moving the sticks up and down and left and right and then all the way around so up down left right and then make sure you go to all the extremes of the transmitter and then press any button to finish so now we can just double check as you move the sticks that they they center correctly and on the throttle left and right yep so that's all good if you do have any small offsets then obviously you can use the the trims but uh, these look good to go let's go fly